Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett. On the show this morning, Casa Mirna, Boston's largest provider of shelter to survivors of domestic violence, turns 40 years old. We'll also talk about Zumix, an East Boston organization dedicated to the youth of East Boston and their 25-year celebration as well. But up first, the community continues to go unanswered after Suffolk County Register of Probate Felix Arroyo was suspended from his position last month. The specific reasons for the suspension had not been released at the time of this recording, and although there have been no specific allegations of wrongdoing, Arroyo is still on paid administrative leave as an independent investigation of the registry is currently underway. The registry handles probate and family-related matters for the residents of Boston, Winthrop, Revere, and Chelsea on matters such as deaths and divorces, as well as child custody. Arroyo, who was elected to the office and entered in 2014, has repeatedly requested the investigation be done in full public view and in transparency. His lawyer, Walter Prince of the law firm Prince Lobel, claims that Arroyo inherited a trouble department that was blocked from hiring his own management team, something he should have been able to do under state law and the office says it was plagued by a history of cronyism. All of this claims Arroyo led to resistance and intentional sabotage by those who benefited from the practices of the past. Here to give us an update on this very hot case is Heather Perez. She's a spokesperson for Arroyo and we're also joined by senior editor of the Bay State Banner, Yahoo Miller, who interviewed two trial court employees who say they witnessed the sabotage. They both spoke to Miller on the condition of anonymity. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Heather, let me start with you. Uh, if we can get right into it. What right now is uh, Felix Arroyo's status? And has he been, you say, he has he been given any reason for his suspension? So first, let me just say that Felix Arroyo retains the title that he was elected to serve, um, the position that he was elected to serve as the Suffolk County Register of Probate. Harry Spence, the court administrator, has suspended Felix without any due process and without any specific allegation of wrongdoing. Um, this suspension was both unjust and unwarranted. We're talking about a man who has a 40-year history of fighting for social justice and equity. This is a man who was democratically elected to this position, um, a man who has diversified the, fa the staff of the registry in order to serve the needs of the community. And now Harry Spence has called for an investigation where, again, we don't have any specific allegation of wrongdoing and where no, no information about the investigation is made available to the public. Is there, did he get a letter or anything? Is there anything that... Um that you could share with us at, about, he was told nothing about why he's being suspended? So he received um, a letter, and in that letter, there's not a single specific allegation of wrongdoing on the part of Felix. So um, they indicated that they would conduct this investigation. However, no information has been shed to light. Felix has asked that this investigation be made open to the public, that it's done in the light of day. However, Harry has refused to do this. Um, and he has maintained that this investigation would remain private and has not released any information regarding what the investigation is actually Talk about. Talk a little bit more about that, why um, Felix uh, has uh, been so adamant about asking that this be done in public. Right, so Felix has, maintains that it should be done in public for a couple of reasons. One is that without any any specific allegations, we don't know exactly what this investigation is entailing as on the part of what Felix has done. He believes to, and it's on the record, um, Felix's attorney, Walter Prentice, likened this to a witch hunt. Um, we believe that there is, um, and he is assured that there's going to be evidence to show um, that there was sabotage on, on part of the staff towards the efforts that Felix had made after diversifying the, the staff um, in order to serve the community. But also, this is an elected position. He was elected by the voters of Suffolk County, and they should be given the same information um, and the same answers to the questions that we are asking. And he's on paid administrative, administrative leave, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, Yahoo, with the Bay State Banner, ran a big piece on this last week, and you had direct contact, well, you had at least contact, I should say, with Felix. Felix's attorney. What is the main thrust of um, of his argument from what you've been told? Again, that that um, there was sabotage from within the office. Uh, that um, you know, when Felix came in, it's sort of 
you know, a case, you know, could very easily be seen as old Boston versus new Boston in state government, and particularly in county government, you have people who've been in there for a long time, sort of entrenched ways of doing things, and it's a, it's a part of government that um, has typically not been open to people of color. Felix has doubled the number of people of color who are hired there, and, you know, um, according to some of the folks I talked to, um, you know, there were, there were acts, you know, of deliberate sabotage and just sort of an entrenched sense of, you know, people not getting things done there. And it's the way they've done things that he sort of came in there, shook things up, and, uh, you know, so, so a lot of dissent from within his department. Now, you spoke to uh, two employees in the trial court on the condition of anonymity. Can you share with us what they told you about what was going on uh, in that department from their perspective? Again, there were long-term employees there who were, you know, hiding uh, information, uh, letters, things that were filed, checks, uh, you know, um, things that should be moving through the process so that people's cases can move through the process, um, were deliberately stalled, um, you, know, uh, you know, in some cases, you know, case files that were supposed to go through immediately were, you know, moved from one area to another and sort of, you know, deliberately hidden. So, I mean, that, those are the kinds of allegations that those, those individuals uh, shared with me. Any racial hostility or anything like that? Did they talk? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely allegations of racial hostility, including um, racial racial slurs being used in the office. Um, uh, and you know, I mean, I, again, it points to um, you know almost like a clash of cultures there um, in the in the office. Okay. Now, Heather, can you uh, share a little bit about the um, the demographics of who this office serves and uh, the makeup of the staff, what it was like before uh, Felix arrived and then after uh, he started making changes? Absolutely. So again, this is serving the entire um, the entirety of Suffolk County. So the demographics reflects the demographics of the county. Um, most strikingly, though, is that 90% of the court's users are pro se litigants who either um, can't afford an attorney or don't have access to an attorney. To pro se means them. they come in and represent themselves. Exactly. Without an attorney. Exactly. And so you have a great diversity of of people using the court, both um, in their background, in their languages, um, and in their specific needs. People are coming in for, from everything, from uh, wills and adoptions to divorces and restraining orders. So you're handling a lot of very sensitive cases, which requires a staff that has cultural competency, but also the ability to communicate with the users of the court. Um, as it was reported in the Globe and also in um, the Bay State Banner, Felix had diversified, uh, doubled the diversity of the staff um, in the registry from 22% to 44% in order to meet the needs of the community that was using the court. Okay, and a lot of these uh, people he brought in, you say, were multilingual, that was an issue as well? Absolutely. So some of some of the um, employees that he was able to hire spoke not just one additional language, but up to two, three, four additional languages. Because that's what many of the people coming in exactly. Speak. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Is there? Um, you've been covering this uh, story. Is there a bigger picture here? A bigger story than just Felix Arroyo's case? Um, yeah. I mean, again, it, it, it goes back to um, you know in county government. Um, you know, people are sort of questioning why are these positions even elected? Um, you know, he's an administrator. Um, but what, what, what we're looking at is, is um, you know, Spence and Arroyo are both, you know, considered to be um, people with great integrity. Um, the, the bigger question of, you know, what are the specific allegations? Um, Felix saying, I want to see, you know, like, let's make this public. Let's, you know, let's see what the allegations against me are. Um, it just raises tons of questions, like, you know, why aren't these questions being, or why aren't any specific allegations being um, being aired at this time? It seems highly irregular. Okay, and uh, Heather, uh, what, what are the next steps for Felix Arroyo at this point? The next steps are really um, building, as we have, the support um, within the community to call for this investigation to be made public. Um, we're asking people who really share our values and share um, the priority of having access to justice to join us um, in, this, in this campaign and in this fight. Um, you can go to votefelix.com 
ask to find out more information to donate. We need that type of support in, a, in, in order to move this forward, to um, expose the injustices, and to fight for, um, for equal access. You said to it, the is it, they will find that there's a public fundraising plea, is there not? Yes. And yes. What is this for legal expenses or? Legal expenses and um, everything in order to, um, to conduct. Uh, our best campaign against exposing the injustices in this court system um, and in moving the, our issues for our you know, I, I failed to mention at the beginning of Felix Arroyo, for those who don't know, most people probably do know that he is a former uh, Boston city councilor, so he's uh, been involved in Boston politics for a long time. Um, yeah, well, one last question for you. Um, I know the, uh, the story, I'm sure, well, the story obviously is not going to end, year, end here. Will the Bay State uh, banner be following this story, anything coming up at all? Absolutely. And we're going to be looking at the, again, looking at the investigation itself. So what we understand is that um, there's a there's an uh, independent investigator, uh, somebody who actually worked in the trial court, uh, a former judge, um, and, uh, you know, documents that I've, you know, uh, seen, um, Spence actually determined the scope of the investigation. So it kind of makes you wonder, how independent is this investigation when he's actually posing the questions that the investigator is going to be, um, you know, looking at? Um, you know, it's not, it, it, it sort of suggests it's not a outside or totally, completely independent investigation. And that's what, um, you know, what Arroyo is calling for is more openness. So we're going to be looking into that. Uh, Heather, finally, I guess, how would, how would you characterize um, how Felix Arroyo is feeling about this. Is he, is he angry, outraged, or I don't know what, uh, I think what, the, what, the, what you would like to say to the public about that? I think what, what I have seen now is the same man who have, has for decades now, for 40 years, who's been committed to fighting for social justice and equity, um, ready to fight and asking the community to, to be involved in this. Okay, and we'll leave it right there. Heather Perez and Yahoo Miller, I guess we're gonna be hearing a lot more about this case, reading a lot more about it in Bay State Banner as well. Thank you both for coming in. Up next, Casa Mirna, Boston's largest provider of shelter to survivors of domestic violence, turns 40 years old. All the details right here on Urban Update.